Hello, this is Trevor. I recently passed the OSCP and I put together this, you know, blog and video to kind of talk about a few tips that I have. Not all of the tips are going to apply to everyone, but hopefully you can find something in here that's worthwhile. Um, so yeah, so let's jump in. We're going to talk about taking notes. Really what I want to get in your head is that the notes that you should be taking are not for the person you are now, but imagine like you eight, I put it in here, 18 hours straight working, trying to crack these boxes, all the pressure of the test. You want to write the notes that you want, want to have had in that situation. So make sure you have lots of detail, um, images on commands, the images show you what to expect. So you can see when things are different, the commands are useful for copy and paste just be really real detailed and try to help out your future self as much as possible um, I do use obsidian so a lot of these uh, tips are going to be using features of obsidian uh, I'm sure if you use a different note-taking app you can do something similar um, but I don't know what those are all right uh, next up use templates so I've got an image here of what my HTTP template starts with. So you can see I have boxes for me to write down the web server, app server, um, any notes that I have, I can just place in here. And then I have commands that I can copy and paste. Um, and this is specific to fish. We'll talk about it a little bit about that later, but I can copy this out, set the URL environment variable and then run commands based on that URL. For here, we have what web, but like, you know, dir busting, whatever I need. They, tem templates are extremely useful because they provide structure, repeatability. They make sure that you're doing everything you should be doing each time. Um, and that's why they're super important. Along with templates, I uh, format a machine structure like this. Um, so here's just an example, a box from Proving Ground CTF 200-1. Um, I have a services folder. In that, I, I list out a note for each service I find using Nmap. Um, I also have a storyboard. We're going to talk about that next. And then I have some other files, info, uh, Nmap, uh, stuff like that. Okay, um, so that's so I guess what I'm trying to say is here, create your templates or your structure so that you're organized. You know exactly where info goes when you find it um, and you're not searching all over the place. Storyboards. Um, these are incredibly powerful. So basically the idea is that each practice machine, each exercise, every time you're going through steps of exploiting a vulnerability, you want to capture that, um, and I kind of do it in storyboards. So basically, I'm telling the, the story of how I got from nothing to root on a box. Um, in the example here, I show the box Shaka Bra from Proving Grounds Play, um, and you can see I start out uh, with, actually ahead of this is Nmap, but I didn't put that in the screenshot. But then I show, you know, I, I visit the site and I get this, um, my first thought is command injection, try to, things out until I got this to work. This is what uh, the request looked like when I sent it. And this is uh, the contents of the directory when that request was returned. Um, so I go through and really write a story about including commands and screenshots of how I, I went from nothing to root uh, for every box I do. Um, that's a lot of boxes, but it's going to help. And this is the way I found it most useful. In Obsidian, I used tags to um, to relate information in all those boxes together. Um, here's the front matter for the, the Shaka Bra machine that we just saw. And you can see I listed this with the tags PE. It's for privilege escalate. So I did, used a sewage binary. Uh, for privilege escalation. My foothold was through command injection. Um, and then I labeled the SUID uh, as VIM. So 
on this box, Vim was the way that you would get uh, pseudo or root. Um, so I tagged those all in the front matter. You can read more about the uh, front matter and, and the notes properties uh, on this link here. Once I have have that, and I, I did it for a ton of boxes, uh, now I can click the tags link in Obsidian, and I have this, you know, I call it a Rolodex in here, but of boxes of storyboards that I use this specific exploit to go through. Um, you can see it shows 125. I didn't do 125 machines because some of them may... Um, have more than one step. So I may use default credentials to get access to the website. Once I'm in, um, I could use command injection or file upload um, to get the fo foothold. So in those instances, I would label it both default credentials and file upload. Um, this is awesome because now let's say I run across command injection again. I have by clicking on this five, I have five instances that I can go back through and look how I did it, what issues came up, what, you know, things I had to do to bypass uh, any filtering, whatever. All that information is captured here, and I can quickly find it by going to the tags and, and then looking up the specific exploit I want to do. So I encourage you to uh, do something like this. Um, either exactly or similar. Yeah. Um, here's a good tip. So reorder, reorganize your notes as needed. Um, I found that I was needing pieces of information outside of where my logical brain wanted to structure the notes. And that's fine. You can do in Obsidian, you can use something like this to include part of the page Um either by, you know, putting a hashtag and then the heading name to include just part of it or all of it um, with doing it like this. Um, here's a quick image of what that looks like. So here's my normal note, and then here's a the DLL um, exploit binary DLL uh, notes that I had that I included into this. And this is probably my privilege Windows privilege escalation note. Um, yeah. Okay, some helpful scripts. Um, all of the scripts that I have, you can find them um, here. I uploaded these four. I don't know how useful all of them will be, but hopefully you'll find something useful. Um, first up, let me show you this one. Uh, it's shells script. So if I just do shells, uh, you can see I get output... Um, reverse shell connection information for the major things that we care about. Um, I have it, you know, just normal here and then URL encoded in case I need that. Um, I have it output my local IP address um, there uh, as well as it puts it in each of the commands. That's done automatically. Um, before I show you the code, I want to show you one other thing. Right now, the default port is 64385. Um, if I wanted to do something else like shells 80, um, you can see the port changes and all of these change. So the IP address is retrieved from the system and the port is defaults to 64385, but you can override it. Um, and of course, if you download it, you can change it to your heart's content. Um, yes, let's take a look at that real quick. Um, all it does is it does this bash, you know, command to get the IPv4 of the ton zero interface. Um, and that's what it uses for the IP address in all of these places. Cool. All right, um, next up, IP script. So this is going to be a little different than I use the fish shell. Um, I don't know if I have an IP right now. I do. Fish shell has 
these universal variables that I can set. So in normal bash, if I did bin bash here, and then I did set our export um, Trevor, I don't even know how to do it, equals blah. Did I do that right? Echo. I did. All right. And then if I open up another bin bash, echo Trevor, you can see it doesn't carry over, right? Um, and that's because the variables are scoped uh, just to that instance. Um, but the fish shell, I can scope it universal. So if I do SV, which is my shortcut for this uh, IP script, I can't remember why I chose SV, but whatever. I can do it 11.2.2 here. And then if I open up a brand new window and do echo IP, you can see that change is reflected. Um, I liked that a lot because I could be, you know, I could start working on a box, set its IP address, and then as I opened up additional terminal windows, it was all there, ready to go. Um, and that's what I talk about here. Oh, this one also does, sets the, um, the local IP. You can see that here. It's all set from the script. Um, kind of the same concept uh, as that first one. Um, but here it is. Yeah, exactly the same code to grab the IP address of the ton zero. Okay. Um, new box script. Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to demo this one. I'll just show you. Um, but basically, it's a Python script that I put together that formatted my... It did two things. So I have the notes in Obsidian, and I have my working directory uh, on my system here. And this formatted both of those the way I wanted it for a new machine. It also did it for like a set of machines. So like OSP, ABC, as well as the exam. On all of those, you're going to get three machines for Active Directory and then three uh, standalone machines. And so this create creates the right directory structure and the files. You can see users, creds, passwords, hashes, and notes. Um, sets those up as empty ready to go, creates the folders that I want. Um, yeah, so I threw it in here. Um, use it how you will. Oh, and it for the Obsidian side, it copied, this was my path to my templates, my Obsidian templates. Um, and so, yeah, so use it, get ideas from it. You, you probably will need to make some changes um, to be able to use it the best, but... Um, I added it, so do with that as you will. PowerShell script, uh, this was a good one. I could do like this, um, pshell.py, the IP address um, that I want to return to. I, I could have done that automatically, I just didn't for this one. And the port I want it to return to, and it prints out the uh, what could be run in either a command shell or PowerShell um, on Windows. And the way it does that is just, you know, it, it, this looks, this probably looks pretty standard to you. Um, it's the normal PowerShell reverse shell. And then I just encode it with UTF 16, um, base 64, remove the, uh, any garbage, and then, um, yeah, it's ready to go. All right. Uh, miscellaneous. So I created a folder on my machine, um, that had all the files that I may want to download from, from the victim machine, all ready to go, all in the same folder. And then in my notes, I had commands that I could just copy and paste so I could always, you know, quickly get the tool I needed. So if it was chisel, um, if it, if I was in PowerShell, I would set a variable 
to the remote IP, which is my machine. And then I would just copy and paste these commands uh, to download. I don't like using um, the dash out file. So usually I grab wget as my first thing and then use wget for all of it. Um, yeah, so again, probably pretty obvious, but I liked it. Uh, the VPN IP. So I thought this was pretty cool. Um, if you see up here in the top uh, right, I have my ton zero IP address always available up front for me there. Um, and that's because I'm using awesome window manager. I was able to customize it to add this. Um, you're probably not using that, um, but I did uh, add it to Tmux. So you can see the IP address is also there. Um, and I here's how I did that. Again, you'll probably have to edit this to fit your cir circumstances, um, but here's how I did it. Uh, cheat sheet. So this, I think, is huge. Um, I used a tool called Navi, and I've linked it here uh, to create my custom cheat sheets. Um, let me show you how that's done. So I have it integrated with the fish shell. So if I hit control G, I get the fuzzy search window to pop, pop up. In the screenshot, I started searching for hashcat. So we'll just duplicate that. If I do H A S H C, you can see we've got examples of a bunch of hashcat depending on hashcat commands, depending on what I want to do. Here's the, uh, you know, what the command looks like. And I can arrow up, decide I want this one, hit enter. It's pre-populated my uh, terminal so I can make any changes I want uh, to that and then run it. Found that hugely helpful. Um, it You can see how many cheat sheets I created for the different commands. Um, think about this. Think about creating the same for yourself uh, if you found that useful. Oh, I used a lot of shell variables. Um, I already talked a little bit about the IP address and how it's universal in Fish, but I used them all the time. So a lot of my commands um, in like Obsidian, I tried to position anything that would change at the end. So here, the dollar sign IP. And then I also tried to use uh, these variables as much as possible. Um, so like, if I had to run this command, I would want to make sure the DOM variable was set and also the URL, and then I could run it. Um, but yeah, you can see here's again, another example of using IP. So I did it all the time, huge time and brain saver um, as you're getting, you know, building those hours on the test. These little things, I think, add up a lot. And that's it. Um, the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about, two things. Uh, one is I didn't, I don't feel I passed because I own, you know, I did these things. Like, I have control of the scripts or these techniques. I feel I passed because I put the time into creating that huge list of uh, tags that I showed you right here. Um, I put the effort into creating these scripts. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I feel I passed, not because I own them. So I'm saying this because I don't want you to uh, download this repo of four scripts implement some of this stuff half-heartedly and believe that's all you need to pass. And it's just not true. You need to, you know, put the effort in, but it'll pay off. And then if you have any different tips, um, anything you did differently or I, you know, I didn't do and you thought was really cool, please let me know. Share those. Um, I'm sure there's other people out there that would like to see them. That's it. Thanks so much. Goodbye.